Candlepin Stars and Strikes is brought to you by the Thompson family of dealerships in Nashua, New Hampshire, and by Tri-State Megabucks and the New Hampshire State Lottery, helping New Hampshire schools one ticket at a time. WNDS Sports presents... New England's favorite bowling show. From Lita Lanes in Nashua, New Hampshire. Featuring the best bowlers from around the region. Campbellpin Stars and Strikes. And now your hosts, Dick Lutz and Mike Morris. Hello again, everybody, and welcome in to another edition of Candlepin Stars and Strikes on WNDS-TV from Lita Lanes in Nashua, New Hampshire. It's the championship round of the Tournament of Champions, and we got a great match in store for you. We do indeed. Mike Morgan and Jeff Surrett, these two met three months ago, Mike Morgan winning that. Jeff Surrett would like to extract some revenge and $2,000 first prize money. We're happy to have you with us for Candlepin Stars and Strikes on WNDS-TV. It's been a great season, and it comes down to this two great bowlers for the championship of the Tournament of Champions. Let's meet them right now. First, our number three seed winner last week over number two seed Chris Sargent, 415 to 396. Mike Morgan from Lynn, Massachusetts. Mike Morgan coming in with a large crowd and an average of 126. High single, 212, 474 high triple. Bowls at Metro Bowl in Peabody. He will be taking on a young man he defeated in a ladder series a couple of months back. He's looking for revenge this afternoon in the Tournament of Champions. Jeff Surrett from Tewksbury, Massachusetts. And a large crowd for Jeff as well. 125 average. High single 202. His high triple is 460. And bowls at Candlewood in North Reading, Mass. $2,000 to the winner of this afternoon's match. You don't have to say much more than that. Let's get right to it. It's the championship match of the Tournament of Champions. Jeff Surrett and Mike Morgan when we come back right after this. We began our Tournament of Champions with six ladder champions. There you see them. Gary Carrington won a couple of matches, beating Bob Whitcomb and Chris Beauvais. Then Mike Morgan defeated Gary Carrington and Chris Sargent, setting up this afternoon's match for the championship between Mike Morgan and top seed Jeff Surrett. We're ready to go with the Tournament of Champions final match on Candlepin Stars and Strikes, and Mike Morgan will be first to bowl. Mike win winner last week over Chris Sargent, three, 415 to 396. He starts off with a strike. Four Who's going to say it, me or you? I'm sorry? I say, who's going to say it? Oh, it's your turn. All right. On his way to a 300. <laughs> he started off with a strike a couple of weeks ago in one of his uh, games. Off the head pin there. I think he did the same thing last week. Started with a strike and then missed the head pin. Mike and Jeff second. met in the championship match of the fourth ladder series of the season. Yeah. There's a big shot by Mike Morgan. Put pressure on the kid right off the bat, huh? And there he is, ladies and gentlemen. At age, age Jeff Surrett. Three and a half. Look at that. He's what been bowling an awful long time. That's Jeff Surrett right there. I believe that was taken at Candlewood Lanes, which is pretty much where he's bowled his whole life. Great shot. Thanks to his dad, Tom Surrett, for embarrassing Jeff by bringing that big photo down to Lita Lanes for today's... Uh, broadcast so Jeff did not convert the spear and as I started again. to mention uh, Mike Morgan in the fourth ladder series defeated Jeff Surrett 402 to 384 in the fifth ladder series Jeff Surrett came right back as the number one seed and defeated John Zappi in the championship match 437 to 399 and that 437 earned him the top seed in the tournament of champions Jeff throws a, a real good first ball, and look what he has to show for it. Do you have any good baby pictures we can bring of you, Dick, maybe next year? Not bowling. <laughs> maybe <laughs> laying down on a sheepskin rug or something <laughs> like that. <but> <laughs> uh, there's a visual I don't want to think about. <laughs> Jeff capped the wood oh. and didn't make the shot. the pins is Mike Morgan 
looking for his third consecutive mark in as many attempts here in the championship match we come all year to get to this day 2000 to the winner 1100 to the runner up so in the spare Mike puts a five tough shot here and he'll not make it had a young man come up to me before the match Mike very I'm, I'm thrilled that he came up to see me his name is uh, Mike Morrill he lives in Grafton sure. right now and he was reminding me of a time oh seven or eight years ago when I was working at WRKO in Boston and we were doing a live broadcast from uh, fairway lanes in uh, Natick, Natick. Mm -hmm. And he was there. And I'd be lying to you if I told you that I remembered him specifically being there, but because I, I didn't. It was so long ago, and there were so many people there. But he came up to reintroduce himself to me, and he was telling me that he's a cancer survivor of 10 years now. Back bowling. Looks terrific. And he just wanted to say hello. And it just made me feel great. He is a terrific uh, competitor, or was. He was also the president of the WCBC for, for quite a while. Yep. And you saw him on television all the time. And then he got ill, and of course that, that pretty much slowed him down. But more importantly, he did survive, as, as you pointed out. In fact, I ran into him in Shrewsbury about a year ago at uh, Golden's Restaurant on Route 9. <laughs> it was good to see him again today. Mike Morrill, for those of you wondering where is Mike Morrill, now you know. He's doing fine. Spare for Jeff Surrett in the third frame, his first mark of the match. Gets him untracked. There's another one. He's definitely untracked. Now the deficit is only six pins for Jeff Surrett. Possibly less if he throws a double strike. Mike, Mor Mike Morgan is working on a mark himself. Mike has three marks in four boxes. Jeff Surrett now with two and four. No, he threw that one away. I could tell as soon as he left his hand, he's only going to put four in the spare. Mike uh, said to me before we started today, I just want to make sure we give everybody a good show. And Mike is pretty good at that. Yeah, he sure is. Sixty-eight half for Mike Morgan. A couple of fills not as good as he'd like. A five and a four on a couple of spares. Turned away after the ball left his hand. I don't know if he's breaking a blister on his hand because he's shaking his right hand off a little bit. Right on the head pin and the mark. Fourth mark of the string for Mike Morgan. And he continues to shake his right hand. He got a cramp or some kind of a pinched nerve or something? And he's hurting in some way. He's shaking it off right in front of us. And there's Jeff Surrett working on a strike. Can he break up the split? No, he cannot. He's got the three and six on the right. The four on the left. He will be open. An eight box. Box to box, four pins separating the bowlers. Mike Morgan's working on a spare. A nine pin drop. We have $700 in the triple strike jackpot, by the way. And the mark for Jeff. Well, it's a good match so far with only four pins separating our two terrific Candlepin professionals. Pulling for a combined $3,100 today. Look at this. The one and the eight, the only pins that went down. Everything else is still standing. A two-pin fill in the spare. Wants to make sure the... Uh, 
pin is not legal? Is it rolling back toward the pins? It's not. If, if it, it does, does, it falls off the plate. It could take them both. Yeah, it's it's moving back, and Paul will up. We'll make sure it stops. Still watching it. It's still moving. Watch out, gang. Don't go away. Yeah, won't this be interesting? <laughs> no, it didn't take either one of them. <laughs> Is there a 24 second clock on this? Nine blocks for Mike. Well, he's had a five fill. He did have one mark in a mark, a spare and a strike, but he's had a five fill, a four fill, and a two fill in his other marks. Not Act much to write home about. Actually, he had a uh, 10 in his strike, so it's a 10, five, four, and two. Kind of going the wrong way there, Mikey. The 2-4-5 would against the back part of the five pin. And that is, believe it or not, somewhat helpful to him. More helpful if he hits it on the other side of the object pin than the side he did hit it on. Yeah, there's a couple of openings for Jeff Surrett now up against a seventh and eighth box open frame in both cases from Mike Morgan and Jeff working on a spare in the sixth frame. Got a note from Walter Gilday of Stoughton, Massachusetts. He writes that uh, he's been watching the Candlepin show since Don Gillis and Jim Britt and Bob Gamir's show, Candlepins for Cash. And he also says, we've, talked, we've had this come up many times before, but for those of you who haven't seen us in a while or are just joining us, when during the Don Gillis show, there was a law blind judge who called the fouls. We don't have one. Have the rules changed? You know what? We don't need one. The bowlers very rarely lob. I can count on one hand the number of times that I think I've seen a lob over the years. If it becomes a persistent problem, the bowlers work it out amongst themselves. And if they don't agree on it, they have a hell of a fight afterwards, I guess. There you go. We'll be here to cover the blows if that's what happens. Ten box for Jeff Surrett, who now has a two-pin lead over Mike Morgan, despite the fact that Morgan has four marks and Surrett has three marks. Jeff's fills have been 10, 8, and 7. Mike threw a good Brooklyn shot that time, but he's got a tough leave. He's got the 3, 6, 10. The 5 is in the middle. There's a piece of wood behind the 5. I don't think it comes into play. Oh, it might be frozen to it. It might help him out. Well, is it going to go? No, it's not. And a 9 box. He's at 108. On the other side of the commercial break, we'll see the final two boxes of the Dick and Mike grudge match fold in February at Pilgrim Lanes. We've been torturing you with two boxes a week for the last month or so, and you'll get to see the payoff today. I think I've got about a six-pin lead through eight frames. I can hardly wait. No, I think, did you, yeah, you had the lead. You had the spare. I had That's a spare. Right. Yeah. The pressure was on. It was a single-pin spare with no wood. And for once, I didn't choke. You were lucky. Whatever. <laughs> but I've been working out at Fast Lanes in Stowe. I've been preparing with my brother Ken, my friends Larry Hoey and Mike Manning. Been working up to this moment, ready to seize the opportunity. Uh, we'll see how that worked out for you here in a couple of minutes. That's the uh, slowest start Mike Morgan has had in his last couple of weeks, 150 and 162. Wow, Jeff Surrett looked like he was going to have everything left, and all that's standing right now is the two pin. And the mark. So Jeff Surrett will have the lead after one. By the way, did you know that Mike Morgan is a teammate of his on their Friday night Metro Bowl team in Peabody? Well, he got a break when he broke up the split. He put seven in the mark. Joe Tavernese, Bob Bettencourt, Tom Sanami, also members. He's a Hall of Famer, Tom is. What a great team that is. Jeff Surratt closes with a pair of marks. He's at 128 plus a ball. So he has a 12-pin lead plus whatever he gets on this ball to fill his 10th frame spare. 
20 year old Jeff Surrett. Ooh, a thin hit. He just puts four in the spare, and it's a 132 first string for Jeff Surrett. A 16 pin lead for Surrett over Mike Morgan as we head to string number two when we return to Lita Lanes in Nashua for the Tournament of Champions on WNDS TV. When we last left you, Michael had a six pin lead in our annual grudge match at Pilgrim Lanes in Haverhill with two boxes uh, remaining. The real pressure on with the mic here. That's Gary Coming Carrington the with the mic. Mike can close me out if he marks here. Hang right there, Wood. Do I play the wood here? You don't want to stay high in this wood because you're going to... 83 through 8. Or 9, rather. One box to go. Right at the head pin. Look at this. What a clutch shot that was. Oh my goodness gracious. How lucky can one man get? A nine box. You missed the spear. You threw it in the no, gutter, right? I think I had a, gu I, I think I had a gutter ball. Yeah. So you missed the spear. So I'm in the hunt. You need a mark to win. Right. Oh, let's go. Let's go. No. What a great shot that was. Clutch. Pressure shot. Here comes the killer right here, though. The absolute killer. I don't even want to watch. <laughs> That's not bad. Oh, okay. and I needed a big count. I got a four. Four in the spare. You wouldn't have even needed a mark to beat me. Yeah, but now you do. Does he get it, folks? What do you think? No. That's it. That's it. Uh, there's the show off in the background playing to the crowd. There it is. The final score of 85, 89 for... Rick Lutz, 92 for Mike Morgan. Oh, well, I'll get him next year. 92 to 89. Let's get back to bowling here where it counts. Jeff Surrett. That was bowling at its finest for a couple of klutzes. I don't even want to watch that ever again. So the series over the years, after four years, is tied at two. We're tied at two, but I have my new bowling balls from Fast Lanes in Stowe that I'm going to work out in practice, and I am going to pummel you next year. Can we expect a little humility from you this year? No. No, I'm just going to absolutely tear you to shreds next year. Jeff Surrett missed the spare. But congratulations, Michael. You won fairly and squarely. Thank you. As usual, uh, the only year that, that was not an even match or close match was last year when yeah. you put a spare strike together toward the end. And I think you had 111 or something yep. like that. Yeah, but every other year, it's been within three or four pins. And it's fun, and you know, it, it's, it's, it's for fun, but still, when you bowl in front of that many people, well, you, you get butterflies. Well, you do, and, and a lot of the bowlers we're in front of yeah. are, are professionals. Thanks to Bob Kelly and uh, Gary Carrington for uh, commentary. You didn't hear it all on the tape. No, they did a great job, and the kids had a great time, and we had a great time. It was fun to be there, and we'll be there again next winter. Syl and Gary Angelotti put on a nice show, and they, they take care of the kids really well, and we appreciate that. They sent them to Canada for a great international competition. Oh, it was a great shot by Jeff Beautiful. Surrett. <laughs> Worth the wait. He had to wait for his balls to come back. That's what he was waiting for. His balls yep. hadn't returned up the rack, and so he was waiting for a while, and we were killing time talking over it, and the balls showed up, and he made the spare. Now Mike Morgan. Mike with the spare. Both bowlers have terrific rooting contingents here today. And it's great to see. The atmosphere here is electric. Terrific crowd. It's been here for the entire tournament. Mike threw a bad ball in the spare. And he only has four in the fill. And he's up against the Jeff Surratt spare in the second box. So he needs this to not lose any more ground. Threw a great shot, but he's not going to make the spare. He's had problems with his spare fills in the first string and now at the beginning of the second string. Wondering how his hand is. I haven't seen him uh, shaking it lately. So Jeff Surratt works on a spare. Jeff, a graduate of Tewksbury High, works at Candlewood Lanes. Yeah. 
Put seven in the mark, and he's got a pretty good setup for a mark. 20 years old, if he were to win today, he couldn't even legally have an adult beverage to celebrate, could he? Missed the spare. Has to settle for a 10 box. Jeff likes to play golf. He shot a three over uh, last year. Three over par, that's not too bad for those of you familiar with golf. It's outstanding, as a matter of fact. No kidding. So he'll be open in the fourth frame as well. Give you a couple of stats here as we give you a snapshot of this past season on Candlepin Stars and Strikes. The average age of our bowlers dropped by one year. 36.3 is the average age of the bowlers you see every week. The youngest bowler is Danny Harris for the second year in a row. 19 years, four months. The oldest bowler for the second year in a row as well, Charlie Jukers at 68 years and 10 months. So both Danny and Charlie had the honors last year and maintained them this year. Just add another year to what they were last time around. But the average age dropping by a year. Uh, Mike threw a good first ball, was left with a 5, 7, 10 with no wood, and they're still standing. So he'll be open in the third. And it's going to be a seven box. Right through the middle. Spread eagle plus one. The nine pin is there behind the three. Watch out. Don't go away. No, it's not going to fall the right way. He almost made it. That would have been a very non-conventional way to make that one. And that'll be a 10 box. So we go to the break with Jeff Surrett in the lead by 20 pins over Mike Morgan. We near the halfway point of the match. We're coming right back to Lita Lanes in Nashua for the championship match of the Tournament of Champions on Candlepin Stars and Strikes on WNDS. Jeff Surrett on lane 34 with a 20 pin lead over Mike Morgan. As we reach the halfway point of the match, Jeff threw a pretty good first ball. The five pin still stands. And the mark. Second mark of the string. We have not given away any bonus money in this match. We've got a lot to give away. The triple strike jackpot has, what, $700 in it, Michael? Dick, it is $700. You're right. And the bonus ball contest is worth $40 if we can match up what our bowler sh winner throws at the end of the match with what postcard we select. We'll talk about how you can get involved, too, as Jeff Surrett almost made the spare. And a nine box for Jeff Surrett. He's at 71 through six. Mike Morgan on lane 34. Don't forget where you see the match lead in that column. That doesn't take into account the fact that Mike Morgan still has two boxes to go to catch up. And he threw a head pin ball. Look at this, look at this. He almost made an impossible shot. Ten box for Mike Morgan. The easy ten with plenty of wood in front. Now we've got a tough shot for Mike. We've got the one, the three, the seven, the nine, and the ten. He's got a shot at it. Mm. Well, he threw a good ball. He just didn't get a break. Didn't scramble like he thought they would. Seven and the nine with some wood in front of the nine pin. And that'll be a nine box. Yeah, the, uh, the lead is slipping further away from Mike Morgan, who finds himself trailing Jeff Surratt, 20-year-old youngster from Tewksbury, by 27 pins midway through today's match. A 
can be eaten up in a big hurry, though. We've seen that happen before. <laughs> Jeff Surratt right on the head pin. Tough shot coming here, though, for Jeff. On the right side, you've got the 3, 6, and 10. On the left side, you've got the 7 pin. No wood to help out. The 7 and the 10 still stand. Nine box for Jeff. Again, don't forget to check out CandlepinCorner.com in the coming weeks to have a look at some of the behind the scenes of what happens as we produce the Tournament of Champions every year. As Kevin Cormier, the webmaster of CandlepinCorner.com, is here taking digital photos today, candids and some of the fun shots, things that happen that you don't get to see on TV. Jeff missed the spare. Candlepin stars and strikes on WNDS TV. Jeff's shaking his head at himself. He's throwing ball. He's just not getting any breaks is what he's telling himself right now, but he's got to keep plugging away at it. Kevin LaFon's our director. Paul Hunter, our chief engineer. Sean Holman is on replay. Cheryl Sylvia is on graphics. Alex Kalyastoff handling audio. Keith Webb is our engineer. Jonathan Elias, Dean Zanello, and Kevin Sheehan, our camera crew here this afternoon. Thanks to Kevin LaFon for spending the day with us at Pilgrim Lanes in February for the shooting of our, our grudge match and the other activities that took place on that day. I wish his camera broke. <laughs> oh, you're a sore loser, like to aren't destroy you? that tape as soon as possible. <laughs> oh, there's Mike Morgan with a nice shot. And the mark for Mike. He needs a bunch more to climb back into contention, although he's not that far behind. With two open frames for Jeff Surratt in the seventh and eighth. Out, he, he can't throw a good ball on a spare. He's been filling spares with terrible true. counts. Four and a two this game. And the last game it was a two, a four, a five, and a ten. He had one good one. Hello, That's oh, going to be a nice beauty. ten box. Twenty three pin lead in the match for Jeff Surrett with two boxes to go in the second string. Right through the middle spread eagle. Both these guys will be very happy to see string number two go and game number three begin. Both struggling with only two marks. Now Jeff got a little backdoor action that time and he's got the two three still to go and it's going to be an eight box. 97 through 9. He had a 132 in the first string. In his championship match in the latter series against John Zappi, his final string was a nifty 183, which was the high triple strike. It hit the triple strike in that string for $1,025. Jeff almost pulled one out of the hat that time. That 183 was the high string for the year, by the way, for all our bowlers. And he finishes with a 10 box and a 107. So Mike Morgan with a chance to get back into this match. Up against uh, five consecutive open frames by Jeff Surrett. A couple of marks pulls him within 10. Easily, maybe more, maybe closer. With fills, if he gets good fills. Well, he's got a tough shot. He leaves the seven pin standing in the left corner with the 3, 6, 10 on the right. Mike will be open in the ninth. I didn't hear what he said. He said something to the crowd. I couldn't tell what it was. And that's going to be a nine box. He's at 91. So in order for him to get into the Jeff Surrett lead, he must mark here. And he didn't hit the head pin. But look at this. Can he break up the split, though? That's the issue. And no, he cannot. That's... That's a tough shot. The four and the ten. And it's tough. Wood, Wood's not a factor here. He's going to try and slide it over, and he couldn't do it. So he'll be open. He's at 99. And that's what it is, a 99 second string for Mike Morgan. 
and he trails Jeff Surrett by 24 pins with one string to go in the Tournament of Champions. We're coming back for string number three right after this on WNDS-TV's Candlepin Stars and Strikes from Lita Lanes in Nashua, New Hampshire. Mike Morgan will be first to bowl in the third string. The last string of the season on WNDS-TV's Candlepin Stars and Strikes as we are set to crown a champion in our Tournament of Champions. Our six ladder series winners all competing for that honor and Mike Morgan trailing by 24 pins starting out. Come on, give us a break, wave, wave. I know this shot goes, Mike. Play the left side oh, of that sure. front wood and he's gonna wipe them all out. That's what he's trying to do. Nope, didn't go, it didn't take it. I thought it would, but it didn't. So Mike will be open in the first frame with a nine box. Mike needs some marks. Dick, I have to uh, apologize. A couple of weeks ago, I mentioned that I would uh, talk about the Bullmore bowling machines that have really been the uh, the linchpin, the centerpiece of most of the bowling centers in the Candlepin world, and, uh, and I totally forgot to do that on the week I said I would. Thank you to Jeff Surrett, who actually did some research, or one of his friends did. Uh, the Bullmore machines made about 10,000 of them between 1950 and 1965, just to show you how popular Candlepin bowling really was back then. There were five different models. They went bankrupt in 1965 due to R&D, research and development of new pin spotters. Four basic models, actually five other companies that were competitors were AMF, Bowl Fast, and Greer Bowl, or Greer rather, Bowlmore Bowl was the most common and uh, produced in Massachusetts in Littleton. In fact, the building where it, they were produced still stands. And actually what Jeff did is he gave me one of the uh, plates off of one of the machines and this was number 819 out of 10,000. So this was one of the originals made by the Bullmore Corporation. 10 box for Jeff starting out. Candlewood Lanes where he bowls in North Reading built in the early 60s with the Model D series and serial numbers in the low 4000s. Candlewood burned down in 1978. I'm sure some folks will remember that. I wasn't living here, so I was not aware of that. Replacement, sh ma replacement machines came from Nautical Bowl, 32 lanes in Revere, uh, and they were Model A machines built in 1950 to 1952. And that's where this particular plate came from, one of those machines from the Bullmore Corporation in Littleton, Massachusetts. Jeff Surratt, thank you very much for giving us that information. And again, I'm sorry I didn't mention it when I said that I would a week or two ago. Jeff also points out that Bullmore made some duck pin pin setters when they were in business. That is true. Mike Morgan needs to start putting some marks on the board. He's fallen further behind. He's 26 pins behind. Not going to make the spare there, so he's 0 for 3 thus far in the third string. And that's going to be a nine box, three nines. Not only is he not marking, he's not pinning. He's, he lost a couple of pins in the first two frames to Jeff Surrett, who did not mark, but got tens in both boxes. Right through the middle. Boy. A lot of money at stake here. $3,100, 2,000 to the winner, 1,100 to the runner-up. We get letters who, uh, from people who have uh, nice things to say about our broadcast, nice things to say about the production, some suggestions for improvements. Do you have a great letter there? Thing. Complimentary uh, letter? I have a great letter. It's, I wouldn't go so far as to say it's complimentary. It's uh, constructive criticism, well, I, I would, would say. I would love to hear it. Well, I won't read the whole thing because I don't want to get arrested. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> But this guy who writes in doesn't like your mustache, Mike. He doesn't, doesn't like your mustache. Dick, how do you feel about it? That's all that matters. I'm not telling. <laughs> and that's a, a, a bowler, a, a, a viewer with obviously much too, far too much time on his hands. <laughs> it's a good I, shot by Jeff well, Surrett for a 10 box. If anybody cares, I can tell you why I grew it. I auditioned for a television show back in the late 70s when I was in my late 20s and I looked like I was about nine years old. And as it turned out, I was pretty equally matched with the other person I was competing with. But he got the job because he looked older and he had a mustache. So I said, 
I got to add a few years if I want to get any television work. Jeff looking for his first mark of the string, and he gets it. So we go to the break, and Jeff Surrett is added to his lead. He will lead by about 30-plus pins with six boxes remaining when we come back for the break for the finale of the Tournament of Champions on Candlepin Stars and Strikes from Lita Lanes in Nashua on WNDS-TV. Mike Morgan has a mountain to climb and not much time to climb it. Six boxes remain. He trails by 28 pins, plus whatever Jeff Surrett gets on his spare as a fill. On lane 34, Mike Morgan, the veteran, throws a great first ball, and look at what he has to show for it. Well, I think this goes, too. Hit the wood on the left and bounce the ball over to the right. That's the only way to go after it. And that's what he's trying to do, and he didn't bounce it far enough, so it didn't take it. So he will be open. A 46 half for Mike Morgan. 46-year-old bowler from Lynn, Massachusetts. Do you think he's got much experience on TV? Oh, yeah. 73 of, times. A couple of his sisters are here rooting him on. And half of the North Shore of Massachusetts. Some of his employer, or uh, fellow employees, I should say. From GE. Yeah. Ten box for Mike. Been a tough day for Mike Morgan. Last week, 415. This week, really struggling. 116 and 99. Jeff Surrett didn't throw a good first ball, but he got a break. He's struggling also, but he's struggling less than Mike Morgan. The four horsemen right side with some wood, and there it goes. Gets a round of applause from Mike Morgan, a true gentleman in the game. Watch it again. The 10 pin is the last to go. It took some coaxing and some bounce off the walls. Now Jeff looks for three marks in a row. We're trying to give away some bonus money. We haven't yet this afternoon. Well, nobody's going to go away hurting today. $1,100 to the runner-up. He missed the spare. <laughs> and the, the 10 box. Now a 43-pin lead for Jeff Surratt with only four frames to go. Got an, a letter from RB, who does it's all the only way he signs it. But it's a nice letter. I think I'll read it anyway. I'm a 23-year-old fan of Candlepin Bowling. I've been bowling in leagues since I was about 14. Never miss a weekend of stars and strikes. A friend of mine and I actually drove up to Lita Lanes this past weekend just so we could bowl at the same alley where New England's best bowlers play at. When I first got there, the gentleman at the counter who gave us our lane and shoes happened to be Chris Bovair. And I thought this was a nice added bonus. So they bowled six drinks. They went to Ruby Tuesdays to grab a bite to eat on the way home. It was a good day. And I'm looking forward to going back to Lita Lanes, maybe during a taping. I think that would be exciting. Just wanted to share this with you, and I'm hoping I hear my letter read on your show. RB, there's the letter, and it was nice of you to come up to Lita Lanes and, and get a from? taste of... Doesn't say. Check the postmark. Can't tell what it says. Central Massachusetts, it says, but that doesn't really tell me much. So an eight for Mike Morgan, yet to get his first mark. Sensing, sensing some loss or despair out there. He just doesn't have it today. And an anticlimactic finish as Jeff Surrett will, I guess, limp to the finish line, is, for lack of any better way to put it. A mark for Jeff. Fill it with a seven, a split, three, four, and six. Piece of wood teetering off onto the channel on the right. Not going to make it. He'll be open. But he'll have a better than 50 pin lead with two frames to go. Nine box, a 101. It is a 51 pin lead with two boxes remaining. Seven. 
Have to reset the pins as one fell down. So this brings an end to our sixth season on Candlepin Stars and Strikes. Sixth season for your humble hosts and grateful hosts for your loyal viewing. We sure are grateful. Thank and we you. appreciate hearing from you and we look forward to season seven. Mike missed the spare. And a nine box, he's at 83. A strike for Mike Morgan in the 10th frame. Bittersweet to be sure. Not a good ball. A 101 for Mike Morgan, a three string total of 316. And Jeff Surrett is our Tournament of Champions winner. And probably the youngest one ever at age 20 and a couple of months. Jeff bowling out the string here now. 10 box, 111. He's at 350. And he wants to get it over as badly as sure. Mike wants him to get Going it over. Going through the motions right now, getting it done. And they're both hoping neither of them have to stand up with us for very long after the match today. And there's a spare to finish out for Jeff Surrett. $2,000 payday for 20-year-old Jeff Surrett. Not too shabby. Funny thing is, when he uh, won a couple of months ago, he made more money that day because of bonus money. Triple strike. And the $1,500 first prize. Oops. Put two in it. And a 123 third string and a 362 triple for Jeff Surrett. And the Tournament of Championship crown belongs to Jeff Surrett of Tewksbury, Massachusetts. We'll come back to wrap it up for you right after this on WNDS-TV's Candlepin Stars and Strikes. Jeff Surrett defeats Mike Morgan. The final score, 362 to something less than that. <laughs> there you go. Whatever it was. Mike Morgan joins us. We'll hand out some money, first of all. The runner-up prize is $1,100. Got some bonus money from last week. The total is $175. And uh, young Jeff Surrett, he's one tough young bowler. Yeah, he is. I, I, I wish I could have bowled better because you didn't see the real Jeff Surrett. I just, like, I, I think I lulled him to sleep with, you know. <laughs> <laughs> you know, if he didn't get pushed, he didn't really do it. He would have bowled a lot better. But I just had nothing left and no excuse. I mean, if I bowled better, he would have bowled better, too, so. All right, you've been around the game of Candlepin bowling for a long time. You explained it to me how one guy can bowl a 400 one week and come back with uh, what you did this week. Well, let me tell you this. If I had a shovel, I would have started digging. Because <laughs> I knew I had nothing left. It's, it's just bowling, you know. I, I don't think you hit the head pin twice on the left alley, but then you force it there because I was squeezing. I had a hard time getting the grip, and I was squeezing. I just had nothing on it. Well, let me ask you, talking about squeezing the ball, it appeared as though that your hand was either cramped or in some kind of pain at some point. You were shaking it off, and you would never use it as an excuse. No. But, but what was happening at the time? Well, I just think I sweat so much in the three matches that, you know, I, I did start cramping up, but it didn't affect my bowl, and I just, you know, obviously had to hold the ball tighter, and I didn't have the same roll, but... Like I said, if I bowled better, he still probably would have bowled better, so it didn't matter. Mike, congratulations. You, we'll see you time. next year. Thank Appreciate you, man. It. See you. Ladies and gentlemen, Mike Morgan. And now our bonus ball contest, Jeff Serretta on lane 33. We'll try to match him up with a winner at home. A seven. Let's see if Mike Morin can grab a seven out of there. It's worth $40. And it is Mr. Ray Pino of Derry, eight. Not a match. Oh. Consolation prize for men and our trophies in Winchester, Massachusetts. And Jeff Surrett steps in and we'll hand him the first place check, $2,000. And congratulations. And revenge is sweet, isn't it? You had him a couple of months ago in the uh, ladder series and he beat you and you got him today. It feels good to win, but the way I won, that was just ugly. <laughs> felt bad for the people watching. I mean, I would have been, I would have been long gone. <laughs> It's uh, funny, uh, we, at the beginning of the match, as you know, we had a picture of you yeah. bowling at age three and a half. Did you know your dad was going to bring that down today to show everybody? I had no idea. <laughs> and if you did, 
<laughs> if you knew he was going to do it. <laughs> Are you kidding me? I wouldn't have shown up. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I have something to give back to you. This is the uh, the Bullmore plate that you gave me today, and you said, you know, if you guys have a kind of a slow part of the match, you need to fill with something to talk about. You gave me some facts about Bullmore, and as it turned out, we did need to pull it out a little bit. Yeah, you had about an hour. <laughs> <laughs> but it was, it's quite an interesting, the history of the company is very interesting, the, the way those machines, they made 10,000 of which makes you think that Candlepin Bowling at one time was so incredibly popular, you kind of hope that, that bowlers like you and other young guys kind of bring the popularity back to the game today, so thank you for bringing that in. Anytime, it's a launch. Do what I can. Well, well Jeff, congratulations. congratulations to you. Great day. You're the champion, the man. champion of the Tournament right. of Champions, Jeff Surrett. Ladies and gentlemen, and that brings the curtain down on another season of Candlepin Stars and Strikes. $35,000 in prize money thanks to you, thanks to Lita Lanes, and we hope to see you with a brand new season this fall. We appreciate you watching every week as you do your loyal fans of Candlepin Boiling. Bowling. If it wasn't for you, it wouldn't be possible. So for Mike Morin and our entire crew, I'm Dick Lutz at Lita Lanes in Nashua, New Hampshire. Thanks for watching, everybody, and remember, our friends at Lita Lanes want you to remember as we wait for next season,